All right, guys, I did want to um, just add one more thing um, on the um, the modeling wind and air parcels. Um, so thinking about what causes wind to come from different directions, um, because in the video it had wind going one way, wind going another way, and that moved the parcel left and right. And then when wind came from all directions, it actually moved that parcel up. So what causes um, that um, wind comes from different directions um, when you have a region of low pressure surrounded by a region of high pressure? Um, and so low pressure um, is essentially not a lot of pressure. <laughs> high pressure is when it's like super duper um hard and thinking about like that syringe of low pressure, barely pushing that plunger, um, and then high pressure, um, when we're really trying to push that syringe in. Okay. So now we're going to jump into the simulation and, um, for us, we're going to, um, jump into regional weather too. Um, so when you launch the sim, um, by clicking that link and you choose these three lines over here, we're going to choose regional weather two. And as we do that, so now looking at regional weather two, we've got some different, um, we've got some different um, variables to now um, add to our um, to to our simulation here. So we have sunlight to surface, which we've had in regional weather one, and then the surface water, um, which we also had um, in regional weather one. We know that when we increase um, our surface water, there's more water that's available to um, evaporate and make um, water vapor. When there's more sunlight, um, it transfers more energy to the surface, which then transfers more energy to that parcel, which causes the parcel to rise. So now we're going to be looking at pressure. And so the only thing I want to do right now is just kind of look and see what happens when I have pressure around the parcel and pressure at the parcel. Okay, so we're seeing the same things, right? That the energy is transferred from the sun to the surface. We had the setting set at, at um, low. And then I've got my energy transfer out. Looks very similar to what we have um, been um, doing in regional weather one. So let's go ahead and let's change some things. So let me put um, high pressure around the parcel. Um, and low pressure um, around at the parcel. So remember that um, wind um, was a region of low pressure surrounded by a region of high pressure. And let's see what happens. Ah, did you guys see that there was some arrows going up there? Okay, we didn't have those arrows that first time around. And then we've got some rain here. Okay, let's do high um, and high. Let's see what happens there. So actually, and if we look here, okay, um, we see that wind is coming from both sides. Wait a minute, we saw that in the video. Okay, it looks like when I change these, Okay, there's a lot, a lot of wind. There's a medium amount of wind. There's no wind. So what happens? We've got a lot. So we're still getting that energy transfer. I have air parcels still rising. Um, we still get a height, we still get some temperature change. All right, so now we're gonna look at two air parcels and we are going um, to collect some data to start getting some meaning. Again, because the thing that we're trying to figure out, the, the question that we're answering is why did the most recent storm in Galetown have the greatest amount of rain? Okay. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to build. Okay. And then, all right, I'm going to set the sliders for sunlight to surface um, and surface water to three. Okay. Those are there. I'm going to set the pressure on the parcel to create wind that blows towards the parcel. Press one. Press run and analyze. Complete the first row. Repeat the process to create a parcel with no wind. Okay. So we know that there's arrows there, so we have created wind, and we're going to go ahead and we're going um, to run, and we're actually going to look at the Analyze tab this time. Okay. Alright, so um, when I look at this, I've got some data here that this it began rising at 30 degrees. The final temperature of the air parcel was negative 40, right, because it transferred out its energy to the surrounding air. Um, it had a difference of 70. Um, the energy transferred out was 146 millijoules, and our rainfall level was 2. So coming back over here, oops, and my final parcel height was 8.5 kilometers. 5, it was negative 40, energy released, I don't remember, 146. And then the centimeters of rain, that's something new. We haven't looked at centimeters of rain, but it's just right down here. The liquid rain that fell was six centimeters. All right. So now we're going to do no rain. I'm sorry, no wind. So we're going to keep the things the same, right? And so we know that there's no wind when they're both at, at low. Um, and so let's go ahead and run and see what happens. Energy from the sun is transferring to the surface. The surface starts heating up and it begins transferring its um, energy to the, the air parcel. Once the air parcel reaches a certain um, temperature, it begins, um, it begins rising and it gives off its energy as it rises. The air parcel gives it its energy to the surrounding air. Um, and then once the air parcel and the troposphere temperature are in equilibrium, it stops rising. All right, and so we're going to look at our Analyze tab here. All right, so our parcel height was five and a half. Let's see. Um, our final was negative 30. The energy released was 108. And the amount of rain was 10 centimeters. So using the data table, describe how wind can affect the cooling of an air parcel. So I'm thinking about what was the height of those parcels? Well, that parcel went a whole lot higher when there was wind, right? So if there's wind, the parcel can go higher. And as it's going higher, it's actually going to cool more. And then how does wind affect the amount of rain? Hmm. In my data here, in my data here, I've got... I thought wrong data, guys. Okay, guys. You know what? Things happen, right? We make mistakes. We knew <laughs> that wind should have given us um, more rain um, than no wind. And so what I did is I went back and I started my test again. Okay, sunlight to surface. Um, were three, pressure at the parcel was one, pressure around the parcel was three. Okay, we still had, um, um, sorry, let's just go ahead and press play. Um, so <laughs> that energy was transferring um, from the sun to the surface, from the surface to the parcel. 
Okay, once it hit 30 degrees, that parcel began to rise. Um, and then the wind also helped push the parcel up. And then the rain became um, began to fall. So what I forgot to do um, when I was running the simulation is I had to wait until the rain stopped um, because if you press analyze before the rain has stopped, it will only measure the amount of rain up until the point that you pressed analyze, not until the rain is completely done. Um, so what it actually got was 15 centimeters. So coming back over here, and hey guys, mistakes are cool, right? We, we, we learn from our mistakes. Teachers make mistakes, okay? Um, so coming back to our question here, how does wind affect the amount of rain? When there's more wind, there's more rain, okay? Um, I want to come back over here, and I want to see if I maybe, just maybe, yeah. Okay, because I've been talking about um, these storms, and, you know, I didn't quite think that uh, we had some full information here. Okay, so what we're trying to figure out is what or why did the most recent storm in Galetown have the greatest amount of rain? Okay, and so storm one was before the lake, right? So it was not going to have a lot of um it was not going to have a lot of rain because there wasn't a lot of surface water available. Um, and then storms two and three, we found out that um, when you had an increase in temperature, when it was very warm outside, then you were going to have a bigger storm. So that's how we knew that storm three was bigger than storm two. But then we had to look at storm three and four. Well, storm three was warmer than storm four but there was something different. Um, there was still high surface, but there was more rain. What was it that um, had those um, storm four um, have more rain than storm three, even though it was um, not as warm? It was still hot outside, but it definitely wasn't as warm. All right, guys, let's do my homework.